What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the Brew Lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the Brew Lab, I'm coming at you with the beginning of Meta Week. It has been a little while since we've done this on the on the channel. Um, I used to do it quite regularly. Uh, meta Week is just seven days where every single day I'll pick one of the top decks in the meta. I'm going to be making this list uh, based upon win rates, play rates tournament results and any other sort of metric that I can think of and I'll pick the top seven decks in the format and we're going to be not just playing them the way I usually do you know where I'm trying to show you guys a new deck and teach you how to play it the decks that I'm going to be bringing for the next week to the channel you will all know because you'll definitely have played against them already so the questions are going to be more about like can we make them better are they going to lose a lot of cards come rotation uh, will the deck even still exist as a thing come rotation? What can we replace these things with? What can we expect to be printed in Dominaria United on September 9th uh, is the release date on Arena, I believe. Um, you know, there, there lots of, of cool things to discuss with regards to the meta and the top decks and, and how it is that that might change in the coming months. Um, which will bring us, so today is the 14th, seven decks will bring us to the 21st. On the 21st, I'm taking a small holiday. Um, I'm flying to Bali, Indonesia, where, um, if you guys did not know already, I used to live for the last 13 years of my life or so. Um, my family owns and operates a small uh, resort on the island of Bali. And um, I had to leave because of the pandemic. Uh, you know, the pandemic hit and all tourism ground completely to a halt. Uh, so we basically shut the hotel down and um, we stayed in lockdown there for most of that year. But then when things did not show any sign of letting up, my wife and I thought it would be a good idea to go to Italy and visit um, the in-laws, you know, the others, my wife's parents who had never met my son who was actually born in Bali. And um, anyway, I'm <laughs> a little overshare here, too much information, but, Basically, I need to go back. I haven't been back in two years. I have a daughter there. I have my parents there. My dog is there. You know, I, I packed a tiny carry-on with like some clothes, like all my clothes are there. Uh, so I really need to go back and um, reconnect with my family, spend time with my daughter, grab a bunch of my stuff. And then I'm flying back to Italy on the 24th of August. So it's about a month and I'm not taking an entire month off. I'm just letting you know that between the 21st when Meta Week ends and the 24th of August, the content will come out a little bit slower. I'm either going to wait for the standard 2023 play queue to start up in August. Uh, then we'll have a, a whole new little micro meta to attack. Uh, and we'll get to see if some of those rotation proof brews that I brewed up in the last couple of weeks uh, will hold their own in that format. and it's definitely going to be fun and also spoilers will be starting for dominaria united so um the content that you will be seeing between the the 21st of july and the 24th of august is going to be uh, probably not every single day i'll probably do a video every second day um which will give me plenty of time then to spend time with my daughter and all those things i've just talked about um and then uh as soon as spoiler season kicks off we'll be doing spoilers and then uh, i'll be back in italy and we'll get straight back into it and um i'll be refreshed had a little break ready to attack a new meta with a bunch of new cards rotation it's going to be amazing so yes sorry for the long-winded introduction but i just needed to get that out of the way a little bit of um, news and announcements with regards to the channel meta week kicking off starting today brew lab taking a soft holiday for about three and a half four weeks uh from the 21st now without further ado let's jump into tonight's first brew meta week day one and uh it's gonna be selesnia and the reason for this is I'm going to quickly show you. It's the top deck. It's finally overtaken Boros Burn. This obviously changes when you filter it up to like uh, Diamond. Then it slips down here. But still, 55. Fourth deck in the format. 
kind of out of nowhere because it was Naya Runes for a long time that held that place. And now Naya Runes is not even on this list. It's gone. And Selesnya Enchantments um, has been creeping its way back up. And I think what's changed, you know, the initial versions of this deck we were playing a lot of uh, when Kamigawa just dropped. It was uh, featuring a full play set of Hallowed Haunting, and it was, um, you know, they had four drops, and there was Katilda, and all sorts of other things going on in here, which made the deck um, a little bit more mid rangey. This now, with 21 lands and like only two drops, really, and just one three drop with the touch of the Spirit Realm, is an aggro deck. It's a fully blown aggro deck. And um, yeah. I thought for day one of um, of uh, Meta Week, why not have a look at a at a deck that I haven't played at all since Kamigawa Neon Dynasty first dropped, <laughs> uh, and especially since it's it's changed so much and by is by no means solved. Um, as you can see, there's many versions and there, there's lots of different ideas around the cards. I mean, there's, there's versions over here that are running 16 lands. Um, you know, the Snakeskin Veil, Sejiri. So there's, you know, the Sejiri making up for the lands. There's versions in here that have Touch of the Spirit Realm. I maybe prefer to run Borrowed Time, honestly. Uh, lots of little things that you can still adjust in this deck, which will make it feel quite a lot different. And I think... Um, that's also what enticed me to to make this the first deck for tonight because I've already done a couple of brew labifications. <clears throat> the first thing I did was, of course, to fix the mana base a little bit. I did not like it just being so many basics. Uh, I threw in an Eganjo and a Boseju and a couple of farmlands and one field of ruin, just making me feel a little bit more comfortable about the mana base. The, the, when I copied it off uh, untapped, it just had plains, forests, the pathways, and that's it. So it was a lot of basics and I was worrying about like just drawing the wrong colors at the wrong time and that sort of thing. So this just makes me feel a lot better. And uh, But the rest of the deck I've left exactly as it is for, for this first couple of matches. Then what we're going to do is discuss potential modifications and upgrades that I would make that I think would make it a lot better. And we'll of course also test those adjustments in the final matches of tonight. So stick around to the end. But... Um, I don't need to reintroduce this brew. You guys have all seen and played against it many, many times. I'll just draw your attention to a few of the cool synergies. The Weaver of Harmony gives our enchanted creatures plus one, plus one. So if you've got multiple copies of these on the board, we've got a few enchantment creatures. The um, Jukai Naturalist and the Spirited Companion, as well as the backside of Michigo's Reign of Truth, the Portrait of Michigo. But these will all get a little anthem effect from the Weaver of Harmony. And you get to copy uh, target activated or triggered abilities of an enchantment source of control so these removal spells circle of confinement and touch of the spirit realm uh, you can pay one green tap the weaver of harmony and exile uh, you know potentially two targets off of one creature uh, off of one um, spell which is quite nice of course you can also double the triggers off of the portrait of Mich uh, off of michigo's reign of truth which is uh, basically the the main win con in my opinion i mean you you Put a trample uh, guy, you know, you get down a bunch of enchantments and then uh, you play your Michigo's Reign of Truth, give the trampler the, the additional plus one plus one, and then you double that with the Weaver of Harmony and you make this giant trampler swinging for the kill. Mm. You can also double the draws that you get off of the Spirited Companion and the Rune of Might. Uh, plenty of cool little things that you can do with the Weaver of Harmony in this deck. Um, then we've got 21 lands, which is okay because the deck is so low to the ground. We've got Commune with Spirits to keep the gas coming. It'll either find an enchantment or a land. I mean, the majority of the deck is either or, so you'll almost always find something off of this card. Um, and that's uh, going to keep keep the, the cards flowing. Yeah, some removal, some card draw, some Trampley Boys, some life gain. You've all seen it, but... Um, I think there's some adjustments that can make this pop a lot more. So stick around to the end and I'll show you what I think I would do to make this deck a lot better. Righty, let's jump into some games. Of course, Rank Ladder. This is uh, tried and tested. No need, uh, although I'm going in blind. I haven't played a single match of this deck. This is like uh, 
and it's been a long time since I've played Selesnya Enchantments, but I feel like I've played against it enough that I know what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. <clears throat> Three lands in the opening hand. Wow. Would you look at that? Wow, that's a crazy flood for a deck with 16 uh, with 21 lands. Was the next four cards in the top with us all lands? Could be a virtuoso deck. I've just tanked my rank in the last couple of days, testing all kinds of jank on the ladder. I've had loads of fun doing it, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe I need to focus on... Ooh, life gain. Um, okay. That's why you run Borrowed Time over Touch of the Spirit Realm. I know there's this channel ability, but honestly, it can only be creatures or artifacts. Oh, that is beautiful. Double Michigo. That was a huge misplay. So this is only artifacts or creatures. Whew. Felt pretty nice. Now we go all the Michi goes onto the trampler. Disgusting. Life gain nonsense, dude. Are you kidding me, man? life gain the amount of life that they can gain with this card on the board is insane um all right well game one not bad we learned something i think borrowed time is the way to go i know that there's that channel ability you can occasionally use it to flicker one of your creatures and save it from removal but borrowed time is just any non-land permanent whereas um that other one is uh just Artifacts and creatures, which is a little bit too narrow, in my opinion. Apostate 31. Cool, 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 cool. Ish. Back is not cool. Lots of removal.
and we're exiling a vampire, which is pretty cool. You don't often actually get to exile a vampire with the Circle of Confinement. But whenever they cast another vampire spell with the same name, we gain two life, which is a cool little added bonus. Come on, Michigos. Oh. feels pretty good guys i'm not gonna lie i haven't played like a top meta deck in a while um other than boris of course we just did the video on that but then that goes without saying I mean, we race to mythic with the with the top aggro deck in the format every season <clears throat> what i've been seeing a lot of and i'm kind of dreading playing it but i know it's going to be one on the list is these like new-ish goldspan dragon fable of the mirror breaker decks they're like they're coming back with a, with a passion man there's a lot of them another mono black player At least they've got no enchantment removal, other than um, Invoke Despair. Double Michigos is pretty nice. But Snowlands means blood on the snow, means we need to end this quickly. Wow. Okay. I can see why this is uh, creeping up to the top of the charts again. I think that's enough matches to for you guys to get it, right? That uh, we, we did the thing. Now, what would I do to just make this a little bit better? I would say, first of all, bye-bye. Personally, I just think this is the better option. Maybe we just go with um, one of the others. Just Okay, let's go for a two and two split. How about that? Then I would cut one Weaver and I would throw in a Katilda. Just one. And then I was thinking I would cut one rune of might and put in one of the other runes um just to be able to give the cami of transience life gain small things um alongside the mana base change that i've already made i think a sneaky one of katilda could be game breaking like real like amazing um, and I think borrowed time is better than the touch of the spirit realm as far as removal is concerned. Nothing huge. Let's jump into some games.
hopefully we get to top deck one of those Katildas. Um, you know, we've got quite a bit of card draw. <laughs> MG Brox. <laughs> there she blows. In the opening hand. Gotta love it. an automatic must exile straight away type of a target righteous valkyrie okay. Hopefully no vanishing verse. He goes for the angel over the uh, cami. Believe it or not. Juicy hit. I bet you're reg regretting casting that vanishing verse on uh, on that circle of confinement. Of course, he had a second one. Of course. <clears throat> I should have played the Weaver first. That was a bit of a misplay. <laughs> they just scoop it up, man. So epic. What a deck. So, you know, I did say we would talk a little bit about this. Um, I don't just want these this meta week series to just be about me playing meta decks like um there's not going to be much that surprises you in the gameplay footage so i'm i also just want to discuss things like this is one of the decks which is losing nothing okay um the runes are going to disappear not a huge deal as you can see this isn't the naya runes version there's really only three runes in the whole deck then of course the pathways uh, are going Maybe the Field of Ruin will too, if it doesn't get a reprint. But the rest of the cards in this deck, the rest, are all sticking around after rotation. So, perhaps, um, you know, some of its natural predators, decks that um, do really well against this type of um, brew, will also lose some of its pieces come rotation, and this one won't, which will just naturally from that alone make it better and there's a chance that in um, dominaria united usually dominaria sets uh, if history is anything to go by are based a lot upon artifact synergies so i'm thinking maybe the michigo's reign of truth will get a little bit better but otherwise i wonder it'll be interesting to see if we get any new pieces for this brew um but uh yeah that's really all I have to say about it. Um, you could definitely try uh, many different builds. I'm just really enjoying this aggro version with 21 lands. It's amazing. Um, but 
you could put in like a couple extra lands, trim a few things here and there, like maybe even just find space for like one or two more cards and put in just Hallowed Haunting, like a two of Hallowed Haunting at the top end. Maybe cut the runes, don't really need them in this particular brew and uh, put in the Hallowed Hauntings. That would make it rotation proof and, um, you know, a great way to end games if you can't do the aggro plan then you just suddenly start going off with the with the hallowed hauntings that could be uh, an adjustment um planeswalkers there aren't any that really would fit this type of a deck right now uh, it might be cool if we get some planeswalkers that have like enchantment synergies uh but yeah that's really all i need to say about this one um let's play one more match and then we'll just call it a night a little bit shorter these uh, meta week episodes um yeah they don't need to be very long i just wanted to really check in it's been a little while since i've done this like not just touch upon it briefly at the beginning of a video but actually like play the top decks in the format and you know maybe it'll actually get us um back up into the top 1000 after that terrible run. Don't know why I didn't go with green there. That was a huge misplay. Huge misplay. Massive match. I mean, he, he still would have played the Valky. Hmm. Voltage Surge, Blood Chief's Thirst, you name it. Not going well this one. Just a bunch of lands and nothing really. That was terrible. Hey, we had to get at least one loss after such a good night. Uh, six, just lands. One more match, one more match. We definitely have time for one more match. Let's try and end on a freaking win. That was terrible. Terrible, terrible. I still haven't played against a Wizards of the Coast employee. Yukon Jimmy. She played this guy the other day. That is total trash. Do the same mistake again. Real question here is do we go green or white? White it is. Alright. 
Oh my god, man. What a joke. Are you people serious, man? Just... Wowza. Mono red. Probably mono red bombardment, land destruction. Could be. Oh yes, definitely bombardment. Well, at least we get our cami back. Dude, you have got to actually be shitting me, man. That is insane. What the heck? How is that? What a crock of poop, man. Game over. What a joke. What a joke. If he hits a, a burn on the house, we're screwed. We just won. Ah Oops. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Amazing. Fantastic way to end the night. Ah, oh, he had the three bombardments and none of the cantrips. That is the best thing that I've seen today. All right, guys, that's going to be it for tonight's video. We were going to quickly jump back into the deck, but I don't think there's much else. Actually, no, you know what we're going to do? We're going to um, just pop into uh, Untapped quickly and uh, just have a look, see what other people are doing with it. As you saw, there's a version here that runs 16 lands, and they make up for the fact by going with four Sajiri shelters as a way of protecting our creatures i can see why those few matches that went kind of badly for us they just sort of remove everything that we play and we don't ever come back um so if you've got some snakeskin veils and sajiri shelters to protect your your creatures good um this version is running borrowed time instead of the um touch of the spirit realm so there we go and they've they have um done what i did and put in runes of sustenance as well as runes of might so that you can um, give your <clears throat> non-life gainers some life gain so it's not just the jukai naturalist that you're relying on to gain life um and there were i did see some versions in here that are running <clears throat> here this hold for ransom which is a kind of like a new pacify from streets of nukapenna kind of tackle block and the opponent needs to pay seven to get rid of it um, some people are playing Wedding Announcement. I was trying to see if there was anybody playing Hallowed Haunting in this particular version of the deck, but I don't seem to see a single Hallowed Haunting, which is quite... F oh, here we go. The one with a pretty bad win rate down here compared to up here, but still, uh, you know, 57.6 is not a bad win rate uh, over that many matches. This this one is running in the full place of the Hallowed Haunting. This is the more traditional version with... Uh, Restoration of a Gunjo 
and whatnot, um, and Catilda. So I kind of tried to fuse these two together, and 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 that's what you know, what I came up with uh, for tonight. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. So that's going to be it for tonight's gameplay footage, Meta Week Day One. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all tomorrow with Meta Week Day Two. Um, so stay tuned. And until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab signing out. Peace, y'all.